What's up everyone, John from ARTV. It's time for a review of the ninth studio album by the legendary rock group, The Smashing Pumpkins. This one's called Monuments to an Elegy, and it's a part of the Tear Garden by Kaleidoscope trilogy, which initially started out as a couple of EPs, a couple of standalone tracks, and now we've got a trilogy of albums. I don't know exactly what founder Billy Corgan had in mind when he started this, but things have kind of got a little bit confusing. Their most recent effort, Oceana, took a different approach to things, that's for sure. Zeke Geist did not sit well with a lot of people in 2007. However, I did enjoy a lot of that record. I thought there were some great singles on that thing. That's the way my love is. And of course, Tarantula, which definitely had a different vibe about it, but something that I still enjoyed. I actually got into the band from obviously Siamese Dream and Zeitgeist at least at the same time. That's when I picked both of those albums up. I think that's a weird place to start, but also an interesting one because it kind of gives you an old versus modern perspective. Billy recently criticized bands like Foo Fighters and of course Eddie Vedder fronted Pearl Jam for not evolving over the years. And while I disagree with the comments he made, I mean it's just not cool to lash out at people like that. I don't understand why that was necessary, but in some ways I can see what he was saying. But the Smashing Pumpkins do try really hard at times, it seems like, especially on these most recent releases, to update their sound, kind of modernize and streamline things, if you will. I mean, hell, a couple of the tracks, like the single Being Beige on this thing, as well as the track Run To Me, which is definitely my least favorite cut on the record, feel very pop and top 40 style to me. It's like somebody else jumped in and handled the production for a couple of the tracks and made them sound a little bit more streamlined than they really needed to be. I mean, when you've got someone like Tommy Lee of Motley Crue on the drums, do you really need something that sounds like a drum machine on tracks like Run To Me? The track Monuments is a good example of when the synthesizers are used in a good way, something that doesn't sound too formulaic, but at the same time also incorporate the guitars, and it makes a nice blend of it in my opinion. That one also, along with the great lyrics from Corgan on this one. I'm really, really vibing with it. A lot of these songs are very personal. It's kind of a relationship album, if you ask me. It's something that, yeah, we did see that on Oceana, and we have seen very personal records like Siamese Dream and Melancholy and Infinite Sadness in the past. However, I can't say that it always makes for a very good listen, as a lot of these songs just kind of get dull. I think Dorian is a good example of that. That's one that kind of gets a little bit repetitive overstays its welcome even though it's under four minutes long it feels very very tiresome and cumbersome even to me the track drum and fife is kind of one that i'm on the fence with i do like what billy has to say here on this one but the instrumental just feels slightly off to me some of the guitar moments don't exactly line up with the drum hits on this one and it kind of gets annoying if you're really digging into the instrumentation. I'm really coming around on the single being beige. I heard an acoustic version of it on VH1's Morning Buzz, I think it was just last week, and it really made me kind of appreciate the song even more for its subtle nuances. I really like the acoustic guitar on this one, and the way that Billy sings is just very poetic. The way that this song was written makes it feel like something straight out of a journal. Some of these tracks feel slightly overproduced to me, a little bit too slick, a little bit too polished, and he spoke about that in an interview with Vivo. He talked about the track and Drum and Fife and saying that you don't want to overthink things and you don't want to make it a little bit too polished and maybe just leave it as it is and it'll still be a gem. I get what he's saying, but at the same time it does feel a little bit just too fresh in my opinion. Drum and Fife still has its heart and you can't take that away from it. I think the track Tiberius is one that really just unleashed and sets the bar high. Nothing surpasses that in my book. Tiberius opens up with this record. It's definitely got a feisty attitude about it. I love the spunk that it presents. It's another one that combines synthesizers. It doesn't exactly sound modern, but at the same time, it pulls from maybe the late 90s, maybe early 2000s, that style of dance rock, and combines it with the Smashing Pumpkins' usual style. The guitar tone on that one is easily recognizable as the Pumpkins. Billy's voice shines bright on this one, and really just punches through. I don't think a lot of people are seeing what this song has to offer. A lot of people have trashed it and the rest of this record. And there's definitely not something that's going to please every single fan on this album. I think the Smashing Pumpkins fan base is pretty much divided at this point. But there are a handful of songs that are very enjoyable on here and make this album worth a listen. Two other tracks I'd like to mention real quick. The first of those being One and All. 
Definitely has a little bit of a heavier tone for it, maybe a little bit more classic pumpkins, if you will. I definitely don't think that it sounds like their old stuff, but I'm just saying maybe some of the old school fans will appreciate this track a little bit more. They stripped away some of the electronics here on this one and had more of a straightforward rock feel, and I think that that's what a lot of people were disappointed with, is that they're hearing too much modernization. And I don't really have a problem with that, especially when they put it to work in the right way. Of course, I already mentioned examples of that working. Another one of those would be the track in A's. I think that's a girl's name, if I'm not mistaken, and it's supposed to mean something like beautiful or something like that, or one of the most beautiful girls. I had to kind of look around to find a definition on that one, and it was kind of tricky, but I like what that song has to offer. It does feel a little bit more glitchy and electronic in the background on that one, but of course it's still backed by a very solid bass line, a nice guitar groove, and some drumming from Tommy Lee. All over this record, I can't say that I'm necessarily impressed with any of the instrumentation, like super impressed, that is. Some of it is very solid, but for the musicians, as talented as they are, I am a little bit disappointed. There's some good songs on here. You can check the description if you want to see my favorite, least favorite tracks. Monuments to an Elegy is a 3 out of 5 for me, maybe even a light 3.5 if I'm being generous. Let me know your thoughts on the record in the comments section down below. If you enjoy my review of the latest Smashing Pumpkins record, make sure you smash the like button and subscribe to the channel. My top albums of 2014 list is on the way very soon. If you'd like to support the channel with a donation or you want to pick yourself up a t-shirt, uh, that's going to be in the works. So definitely click those top two links in the description down below if you're interested. Find me on Facebook and Twitter for more updates, and I'll see you very soon right here on ARTV. Thank you for watching.